We have a big flare player, multiple coronal holes, and some east limb solar storm action. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is a bit of a mixed bag. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, you can see the big player is in the south. This is region 3068, and it is an M-flare player. However, it hasn't been launching any real big flares, just kind of touching the hairy edge of M-class. So we haven't been getting any big radio blackouts or any big solar storms being launched from this region. We have had a little bit of storming from that southern coronal hole. You can see it rotating through the Earth strike zone now. It isn't the right polarity, so it isn't giving as much storming. We do have a northern polar coronal hole that's also going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and we're going to get probably more of the same, where we're just getting kind of unsettled conditions. And then if we look to the east part of the sun, that's really where some of the activity is beginning to build. You can see a couple more small coronal holes. Those could give us a potential for storming here in the next week or so. But if you look right on the east limb, look at all the bright regions. There's been a lot of solar storms being launched, and new active regions are going to be rotating uh, into Earth view soon. And we also have in the north, do you see that massive prominence there? That looks like it's on the verge of erupting. And so we're going to watch very closely over the next day or so to see what this thing is going to do. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as we take a look at the X-ray flux this week, you can see we've actually had a bit of activity. Mainly, this is due to region 3068. It's the only big flare player on the Earth-facing disk, yet it's underperformed because as we look and we see the M-flare threat level, it really has been skirting just below that. So we haven't been getting any real radio blackouts, just some noise on the bands. But as you can see, right around the first, the, the X-ray flux started to rise a bit. That means the solar flux was also beginning to rise. And as of now, we're sitting right at the hairy edge of 100, which means right at the hairy edge of good radio propagation on Earth's day side. These are, are likely going to continue. The solar flux might even boost just a little bit as some of the new regions rotate into view from the far side of the sun. But meanwhile, we're not expecting any really big solar flares. It's going to be pretty much the same as we see here, easily in through the beginning of this upcoming week. Switching to our solar storm conditions, as you can see, over the past week or so, we've had pretty much unsettled conditions, so even quiet conditions, with a little bit of sprinkling of active conditions here and there. Back on the 26th, we reached active conditions, mainly from a solar storm that kind of sideswiped us. That's pretty much been the story as we keep getting mist to the east and to the west of Earth. And then things settled down for a little while, and then we got that pocket of fast solar wind, and that bumped us back up. In fact, we even reached active conditions for a very short while back on the, the 31st of July. The problem was is that that coronal hole, even though it was pretty strong, wasn't the right polarity to give us some decent solar storming at Earth. So now we've kind of settled back down. We're back down into unsettled conditions. And again, when we get this next uh, fast solar wind, eh, we're going to get a little bit of storming from it. But most likely, these conditions are going to continue pretty much as we've seen them. So aurora photographers, you know, just kind of sit tight and hold on because things will Will change very soon. Remember, we've got a lot of new regions rotating into Earth view from the sun's far side, so next week might be a lot better. So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And when we take a look at Stereo's view, you can see region 3068 rotating off of the sun's west limb from Stereo's view. And just behind it, that's a little bit closer to the east limb, you can see those dark coronal holes. Those will be sending us some fast solar wind here in about a week or so. And then look beyond that, right on the sun's east Slim. Look at all the bright regions. And of course, look at that massive prominence that's just clinging to life there in Stereo's view. You get a really good view of it there. And if this region manages to hang on for another day or two, it's likely going to be on the hairy edge of the Earth strike zone. So we're actually going to be watching it quite closely because if it launches, it could actually give us maybe another side swipe and possibly the chance for some, you know, aurora, maybe just a little bit of a chance. So keep your fingers crossed if you're an aurora chaser 
Cancer. Now, beyond that, we also have other active regions. These are the ones that we're going to be thinking could be big flare players. We're going to have to see, but it's going to be about an, uh, not quite a week before we get to really tell whether or not they're going to give us any activity. Meanwhile, that solar flux is going to continue to boost very slowly up into the triple digits, and that means good news for amateur radio operators and emergency responders because it looks like radio propagation is going to remain in the good range. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon, and by the 9th, the moon will be about 90% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we do have a little bit of fast solar wind coming from that weak northern coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone here over the next few days, but it's probably not going to give us all that much. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled to active conditions, but we do have up to about a 20% chance of a major storm in and around the 5th or the 6th. Yeah, it's kind of hard to tell. It's going to be a bit of a squishy kind of thing, but most likely it's going to stay pretty unsettled. Now, mid-latitudes, we're also expecting unsettled conditions, but we do have up to about a 15% chance of active conditions. And again, it's kind of hard to tell, but likely things are going to be underperforming because this coronal hole and the fast solar wind coming from it's likely not going to be all that strong. So aurora photographers, well, you're just going to likely have to sit this one out, possibly even sit it out at high latitudes until we get a bit more activity, and that should be some time next week. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have two active regions on the Earth-facing disk, but only one of them is a big flare player. In fact, it's kind of been underperforming. This is region 3068. Uh, NOAA is actually giving us only about a 10% chance of M-class flares over the next few days, and then region 3068 will begin to slowly rotate to the sun's far side, and we don't see any new big flare players on the horizon to replace it. So likely the risk for radio blackouts is going to remain reasonably low, and that should make you GPS users very happy. On the other hand, we do have solar flux that's slowly beginning to boost uh, back up into the triple digits, and this means good radio propagation on Earth's day side, and these conditions will continue. In fact, they might even get better as new regions begin to rotate into Earth view. Not really sure if we're going to see any big flare players with those new regions yet. We'll keep you posted, but right now, it looks like these conditions will be pretty much the story over this next week. Now, also, for particle radiation storms, we don't have to worry about it. We're in the D1 normal range. We have no risk for any big radiation storms, so that means everyone who is a frequent flyer and even air crew, you're all in the clear. So the space weather this week is a bit of a mixed bag, but overall it's on the calm side. We do have a coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth strike zone over the next couple days, but you know, it's really not going to be all that impactful. The, the solar wind is not expected to be all that fast. After that, we have another couple small coronal holes, but again, the same kind of story. We're not expecting a whole lot from them. So aurora photographers, even at high latitudes, there's a good chance you're going to have to sit this out and just kind of wait until we get get a bit more activity Earthside before we get any decent solar storm chances and decent aurora chances. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, the nice thing is that the solar flux is back up into the triple digits, and that means good radio propagation on Earth's day side. We don't have much of a risk for radio blackouts right now, and it looks like the solar flux might even boost a bit more here over the next week. So, yeah, the bands are a little bit on the noisy side, but you know what? It should be pretty good overall for you, and expect those conditions to continue. And now you GPS users, well, you know, things aren't too bad. We don't have any big solar storms that are occurring, and, you know, the risk for radio blackouts is pretty low. So, you know, even though we do have solar flux in the triple digits, your GPS reception on Earth's day side should look pretty good. And as long as you stay away from that dawn dust terminator and probably maybe a little bit of trouble at low latitudes at night, you know, your GPS reception shouldn't be too far off. I'm Tamara The Scope, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.